Our 360 Polish Traverse Summit bid begins after a restful night at our local hotel and a short drive to the park entrance. We start by following the same path used by the Polish expedition to chart a new route up Aconcagua in 1983. During the next three days, we will ascend nearly 2,000 meters and trek nearly 60 kilometers to base camp Plaza Argentina. The always visible trail along the left side of the Vacas River leads us through the spectacular high desert Vacas Valley. Eventually, crossing some of the river's tributaries, the path becomes dotted with desert bushes and we arrive at our first camp of Pampa de Leñas. Here, we set up camp and stop in at the ranger station where our permits are checked. In the morning, we pack up camp and continue our trek. After crossing a bridge, the route heads up a steep slope along the right side of the river until arriving at a large level area. A green strip of land and a jutting out rock can be seen at the beginning of the eastern side of the gulch. This is Casa de Piedra. Aconcagua can be seen as we approach, but disappears again behind the mountain as we arrive at our camp. We leave the Vacas Valley behind the next day and enter the narrower Los Relincos Gulch. After crossing the cold Vacas River one more time, we begin the ascent of the gulch by following the right side of Relinco Creek along the north mountainside. Eventually, the route turns into switchbacks before reaching Relinco Falls. We continue to the higher end of the creek and over the Cascades where again we cross the sometimes difficult water. The last stretch of today's trek provides a magnificent view of Mount Ameguino with its steep southern side. We stay left now to avoid the last moraine and the border of a vast plain where we finally arrive at base camp Plaza Argentina. During the following few days, we will ferry a load to our first high camp, acclimatize and get plenty of rest before leaving the lower mountain behind for our first of three high camps. Here, you will also find hot showers, the internet, and other modern conveniences. Our climb to the first of three high camps begins by heading west of camp to start where we quickly reach some rocky buttresses, then turn north to follow the Great Frontal Moraine, which takes us up most of the valley. We now must cross a fast-running creek before arriving on a high plain made up of moraine and rocks. A great frontal moraine now closes up the way between a new rocky buttress to the south and Mount Amagino's side. The slope becomes gentle and the ground turns into a plateau. This is our first high camp, Camp 1. The following day, using the Yamagino Traverse, we ascend through the Yamagino skirts to pass a distinctive spot called Col de Yamagino at 5200 meters. Continuing the ascent, we come to the Yamagino Saddle, where the route becomes a fairly easy traverse until one last steep slope, which ends up in an enormous natural terrace right at the foot of the Polish Glacier. Here, amongst the moraine, is Camp 2. The new view from here is stunning, with the Relinko and Vacas Valleys in sight. The following day will be used to rest and acclimatize before moving to Camp 3. After our stay in Camp 2, we gather our things and make the morning ascent to Camp 3. Taking the last part at the Upper Guanajos Valley, we join the normal route to Camp Cholera, which we use for Camp 3. Cholera is about the same altitude as Camp Berlin and strategically situated to give cover from the high winds which so often accompany this area. Here, we will make our final summit strategies and rest for our early morning climb to the top of the highest peak in South America. Weeks of preparation and acclimatization are now put to the test. Our pre-dawn summit climb begins after a warm breakfast and all last-minute preparations are complete. The well-defined route starts across a section called White Rocks, where it follows the northern side of the mountain leading to switchbacks before arriving at Refugio Independencia. At this common emergency shelter and resting place, we continue to evaluate the team's health and address any group concerns. Next, we cross the Traverse. This well-traveled path takes us across a windy and exposed face directly below the summit. Our path increases in elevation before our arrival at the cave. Here, at this large indentation in the mountain face, we rest and reevaluate what gear we need for our final push to the summit. We are now left with the final stretch, the renowned Canaleta, 
This steep and unrelenting ridge extends toward the west until switching back towards the east at the summit proper to avoid the southern wall exposure. Focusing on pressure breathing and rest stepping helps us keep a steady pace as we slowly reach the rooftop of South America. We savor the summit views as long as weather permits and then descend back to high camp where we fall into our tents and sleep with the knowledge of a well-deserved climb to the summit of Mount Aconcagua. The following morning, we awake with sore bodies and smiles on our faces. We have just climbed the highest summit in both the southern and western hemispheres. After breakfast, we pack up our bags and begin our descent for the final time to our base camp of Plaza de Mulas. Here, we are greeted with a celebratory meal and we enjoy our final night on the mountain. In the morning, we pack up all our belongings and prepare for the long trek out from Plaza de Mulas to the park entrance. We reflect upon the weeks past and the great experiences during our Summit Aconcagua expedition as we make the long trek out to the park entrance. Arriving at the park entrance, our private transportation awaits our return to transfer us to Mendoza for a night out on the town or relaxing at the hotel. For more information or to book your expedition, visit us at summitaconcagua.com 